the world reflects this week and the next on a baby, a very unique baby, born in a feeding trough in a barn outside of a small town a couple millennia ago. No ordinary child. The birth of this baby reveals something very important, devastating and exhilarating at the same time. Devastating to the pride of man and exhilarating in bringing hope, immortality, and life to those who will believe. I want you to turn in your Bibles this morning to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1 tells us what is revealed by the birth of a baby. What is revealed by the birth, by the appearing of this one, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah. In verse 10, Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, but now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And do you see that? The appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, reveals something. What is revealed? That is back in verse 9. God's purpose and grace granted to us in Christ Jesus from all eternity has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. What does the birth of this baby reveal? God's own purpose and grace granted to us in Christ Jesus. What is this purpose and grace? If we walk backwards, we find out it is the gospel in verse 8. According to the power of God, who, beginning of verse 9, has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, now revealed in this baby, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. What is so devastating about Christmas is the devastation to human pride. That is, because of our sin, because of our alienation from God, because of our spiritual deadness, you and I could never do anything to make ourselves right with God. No matter, no matter of works, no amount of supposed good deeds could ever right the wrongs with which we have offended our Maker. And so God had to enter into creation Himself in the person of a baby to reconcile us to Him. The amazing reality of the gospel is that in spite of our sin, in spite of who we are, in spite of everything we have done, God's great love is on display. His grace is revealed in this immense gift. And the gift is His Son. God Himself, the second person of the Trinity, takes on flesh so that He may be born. And as we just sung, He was born so that He would die. To die as our substitute on a cross. To actually pay for the sins of everyone who would believe. He didn't just die as a demonstration of God's kindness as a token of God's love, but as actual payment for sin to reconcile us to God. Every week we celebrate the death of Jesus Christ. Kind of odd to celebrate a death, isn't it? But look at verse 10 at what this death brought about. The appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. What is this death we celebrate? It is a death that ends death. It is a death that conquers death. It is the death that brings life and light and immortality to all who will believe. My friends, if you're here this morning and you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we would invite you to celebrate, to remember with us his death, his burial, his resurrection, his conquering of death, and his bringing of life and immortality to all who would believe. You're going to receive a cup of juice and a piece of bread. These are emblems of his blood and of his crushed body poured out and broken in our place. It was our death that he died. It was the wrath due us that he paid so that we could be with him, so that we could be reconciled to God. 
You don't have to be a member of Grace Bible Church. If you're here this morning and you love Jesus, you've turned from your sins and you believe that his death in your place is your only hope for eternal life and a right relationship with God, this communion celebration is for you. If you're not a believer this morning, we would ask that you just let the juice and the bread pass by you. This is an opportunity for believers to remember what Jesus has done. If you are here this morning and you've never yet believed, you haven't yet experienced the life that Jesus brings, I want you to know that today is a day of salvation. You can turn today and find life and immortality in the gospel of Jesus Christ if you will turn from your sins and turn to Jesus as your only hope to make you right with God. You don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to mend your ways. You have to come to God and admit that you can't and completely and totally cast yourself on Jesus, trusting in him, and he'll change you from the inside out. And you can have life today if you will trust in him. I would invite you to talk to somebody around you this morning if you don't yet know Jesus Christ. Find out how you can have eternal life. We're gonna have a few moments of silence as the men pass out the bread and the juice. I would like to invite you, believer, to examine your heart, repent of any known sin, Find the forgiveness that is already purchased for you at the cross. Rejoice in what Jesus has done and partake in communion.